we, uh, I'm going to, you, you probably read very thoroughly all the reports and, and everything, but nevertheless, I will guide you quickly through each of those uh, proposals that survived the subcommittee. I, again, give the caveat that those are not, uh, do, do not necessarily reflect my or France's opinions, but the rules subcommittee decision to give to the plenary the vote on those, so I'm not behind all of those of what is presented here. Um, and you will see my votes, by the way, probably. Uh, but I will present you as neutrally as possible what is in this pack of the subcommittee report. That's the goal of this presentation. So, Vladimir, please. Here we go. Uh, so the layout, as, uh, as, as last year, you can uh, see here the reference from the original proposals, which doesn't mean that what, is, what was agreed or pushed forward by the subcommittee reflects what those proposals wanted, but it's, you can see the source of the discussion we had in the subcommittee. The first one, proposal number one, actually has nothing to do directly with the rules document, and this is why it's between brackets. Uh, it's a proposal from Czech Republic initially uh, in terms of what documentation is required in the bidding process for championships. So I summarize here very quickly what it's about uh, in this proposal, the bidding form, a letter of intent, if not presented by an act rep. Uh, a championships proposal document with a full list of, uh, uh, of uh, contents in there and a plenary meeting presentation with some guidelines on that. Relating to SIVA processes up for discussion, not a specific rules uh, subject. Any discussion, any comment, any idea? As, as this relates, again, to processes and not to rules, this should be dealt with either now or separately. I don't know how you, run, you want to run that, LG, uh, to, to run the discussions on what are not purely rules. May I make a suggestion, uh, Mr. President? Uh, this, this proposal talked about the documents that we must get uh, from bidders for the chat and chips. Uh, there is, in fact, a, a document on the website today called Guidelines for Bidding for Championships, uh, which is, uh, I think, fulfills some of the uh, requirements of the request from the proposal from the Czech Republic. Uh, my, I suggest that SIVA agree to uh, give the Bureau authorization uh, to move ahead with the improvement and the updating of all of our documents having to do with the bidding process. I think that's best uh, handled by the Bureau. Yes. Okay, I would like just to add to this. Um, uh, well, I think sometimes the presentations are very nicely done and the promises are made by the organizers, but what can we do to ensure that the promises are held? And uh, we don't have the situation as we had today, so we don't accept the reports of contest directors. I think it's not only the question to the Bureau, I think it's a question to all the delegates. First of all, when you make a presentation or ask for uh, to be a host of the competition, to make sure that you keep your promises, or the organizer keep your promises. But another question to all the delegates, probably not for right now, but to think about and send this input to the Bureau, what SIVA can do to ensure that the organization is up to the promises? And what can we do with the organizers who don't hold the promises, who, well, don't make the competition the way they uh, promised to the competition would be run? And another thing, um, for uh, organizers is uh, we have to have the information for the competition uh, for people who live around the airfield. As I understand, at the, in Texas, there was no information whatsoever, even at the closest locations. So people around didn't know the uh, opening ceremony held on the, uh, at the airfield. Nobody was there to see it. 
So it was like some kind of a background competition, not the world championships. So for all the organi organizers, the information about this event, the world championships, continental championships, should go around the airfield as much as possible with uh, posters, with uh, uh, TV or media, whatever is uh, um, available, and try to make it available for, for people to, to see. I would like to add just, uh, I'm the author of this proposal uh, for Czech Republic and uh, it has been submitted uh, before I have a discussion with LG and he added to his uh, president report uh, uh, earlier today uh, the establishment of working group w which will focus on the on the preparation, on the bid, on the presentations and so on. So that's just addition to this uh, uh, to this proposal. Okay, thanks. Any other comment, discussion? Next, Vladimir. The second one is also something not for the rules document. Uh, it's a proposal also from Czech Republic to create a CIVA body, a subcommission, a working group, whatever, to evaluate and certify. Has there been a decision on the proposal of the previous one? Yes, I think, well, let, let me summarize, and if there is not a consensus, let's, let's go back to that. What I understood is that there is a decision or an agreement to uh, leave to the uh, CIVA Bureau uh, the, um, the follow-up on that a proposal in terms of SIVA processes and plus based on uh, Elena's remark uh, to uh, invite all delegates to submit ideas to uh, improve how we make sure that what is presented or promised at bid level is in fact uh, what happens. Is, it, is that correct? Any, is there a consensus on, on that decision? No objection at least? Okay. Okay, uh, Manfred. So, on this one, SIVA body to evaluate and certify any tool used to support the championships, uh, uh, software, possibly hardware, uh, like chairs and I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, everything including the modifications, evolutions, especially the discussions uh, were about all the software evolutions which are not traced and, and documented and therefore raises some, some uh, questions, issues sometimes. Uh, so a body to uh, certify, evaluate, control all that. Does this raise any question or comment at this stage? I would like to add to this proposal because it's again coming from me. Uh, it was intent to mostly to the hardware software solutions we are currently using to support the championships. Um, I would like to withdraw this proposal uh, because uh, I was involved in the discussion with uh, in uh, with Bero and uh, with uh, President of Siva and. Uh, the idea is that first I will prepare a report, what is wrong, what is good, and so on, and uh, present it to the Bureau, and then Bureau will present it to the plenary. So take it, please, as a solution for this proposal. Right, which means we can move to the next one. Here we come to rules, in fact, with this proposal number three. There, there was a controversy popping up earlier this year on how to judge the flight path, the horizontal flight path between figures. With, in fact, uh, we came across uh, some inconsistencies in, uh, in the rule book and this proposal is here to fix the, uh, this inconsistency by making clear that what we judge on the horizontal plane between figures in terms of flight path is not flight path, in fact, it's heading, 
Um, as you can see on the, the drawing here, which is already somewhere in the rule book, in the uh, judging criteria, we make clear in the rest of the rules, especially uh, on this uh, 5312 that you all know by heart, that we judge heading on the horizontal plane between figures. Any question, comment? No? Everyone agrees? Okay. Direction of flight. Ah, another one. You remember we had plenty of discussions on that in the last couple of years. Um, we decided for some uh, new rule last year, and it happens that what we decided last year uh, had a loophole in there for parts of figures which were on the x-axis, for figures which were not entering and exiting on cross axis. So this here fixes this loophole by saying that all x axis elements, segments being line or looping parts, would be uh, directional, which means on the x axis with respect to the official wind, except still family two, because there was no new rule proposed on that. So uh, uh, turns and rolling turns are excluded from that. Uh, it means, for example, to take a, an example, if you, if you have, uh, well, I, I, well, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I, I, if you have any question, we can come back to that. But if not, take as, as granted that this fixes a loophole and that this will be clear for everyone in the future. Any question or comment? No, I hope we'll come to some rules where you have comments because otherwise it's not fun. Everyone agrees? Next. Warmer pilots. Uh, so here we're talking about a procedure for the selection of warmer pilots. There was a working group working on that uh, last year, end of last year and, and this year. Uh, the conclusion from the rules subcommittee was basically what is written here that the warmer pilots would be selected by the jury, which is in that case a neutral body, based on applications sent by NACS, with a suitable experience required, and it will then be for the international jury to judge on the applications what is suitable or not, uh, with a provision to give preference to at least uh, one uh, of the two warm-ups uh, from the organizing country provided, of course, uh, the, the qualifications are fine. Why did we go to that extent? Why do we deal with such details on warm-ups, uh, whereas warm-ups are not competitors, they are not, it's not that important? Well, in fact, it is very important because it's, it's a way for the judges to uh, get a bit of training, to calibrate, to, to, for, for everything. If you want to have a fair contest and a fair judging, we considered that it was important to have a proper standard in terms of warm-ups. Hence, this proposal. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention here, the tasks and duties of warmer pilots, no, no big deal here, same as before. We added a provision here that uh, whatever the country of the warmer pilots, uh, pilots should give no favor to uh, the, 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 the team of his nationality, which means that he has to answer requests on the box conditions, whatever, to anybody who requests the information from him after his flight, his or her flight. Any question or comment on that? Okay, let, let me give an answer to that. Uh, uh, I don't think you need an answer to your first question because I think you know it. The answer is the organizers uh, pay. 
Um, the about, about the cost, if you look at what, what's happened in the recent past, in the last 10 years, uh, where the warmer pilots are not uh, people from the teams uh, who, who pay full entry fees and so on, you, we've seen from a, a, around, maybe not 10 years, but six, seven years, that was not, that's not been the case. Now, the costs, we're talking about the cost of accommodating those people and paying for fuel, not the cost of transport of the aircraft and of the warmer pilot to the pilot contest. These those costs are still borne by the pilot, the NAC, whomever. The organizers pay for what's happening on the spot. So whether the whether the warmer pilot actually from the country or from the sphere, except if the warmer pilot leaves the, in the city where you have the contest, the cost should be around the same. Uh, there is no concern about when the cost on site, there is no contract or whatever to be paid or whatever else on the private side. I would like just to add or ask if uh, the intention of Roma pilots is to provide most information for the teams before they start to they start the program the day, or if they are if they should be focused on providing the uh, how did you say that the, for for the, for the judges the the warm up flight for the judges for for day judging actually because I think uh, as mentioned uh, as mentioned the Hungarian delegate uh, it's uh, rising costs and I disagree that it's insignificant it's significant those costs related with two or with uh, with the uh, two warm-ups and so on uh, with that number of pilots we are starting to have less and less especially in unlimited I think this uh, will definitely lead to a rising of costs and also making it more a little bit more complicated First of all, I'm not saying the costs are insignificant, I'm saying the costs should be around the same if it's separated from the country or from elsewhere, because the organizers do not pay for the aircraft and the warmer pilot to reach the site of the competition. That's, that's written in the rules then. It's in the rules. So I don't... It, it's, uh, it's, uh, and then... Uh, it's, uh, and, and then um, does not lead specifically to increasing the cost. We have in the rules that we need two warmer pilots on every contest uh, and that they don't pay entry fees. We have that in the rules. If this is a procedure about selecting them, this does not increase the cost of the competition. This is a procedure to select. So I would now leave that to uh, Elena and then after over there. Their accommodation and meal actually, not uh, and uh, fuel are paid by the organizers. Uh, well, first of all, if it's not the case, you won't have any warm up pilots probably because they, if they have to pay for that, they would come and apply as. Uh, uh, HD competitors instead of just flying warm up and doing some duty. Uh, and, and it's why and it's why it was changed when the organizer paid paid the entry or not the entry but accommodation and meal for this pilots uh, to make sure that we have the warm up pilots. Uh, with the procedure, I don't know how the international jury can take any steps to ensure that experience and capabilities of those pilots selected for this duty match the demand of the test. How you, how you imagine this? I think uh, for warm-up pilots, we have to have the same as for uh, competing pilots, for um, HC pilots, the national air club must send the application for warm-up up pilots and at the same time, of pilot uh, uh, licenses and make sure that they are applying 
with the right people because the international jury can't make a decision for, for these pilots. Normally, or not normally, but mostly the more warm-up pilots are some, something like reserve pilots for the team or pilots who are not exactly up to win the competitions, but they, they should should be capable of flying this program, but only the probably the national air club, the trainers know about that, not the international jury of, of the competitions. Okay, like be, before going forward on, on your comments, Elena, I want to give the mic to Pavel Kovlev. Excuse me, I don't afraid uh, of rising of costs. Because uh, this year in Poland, we forgot to uh, prepare Polish pilot who flew like uh, Burma pilot in uh, at the competition. And we wanted to have the next one. So we asked uh, Mikhail Mamistov. I was very, very happy that he applied for us. World champion for, uh, for judges. Uh, best performance comparing to, to advanced category. Anyway, he started with paying entry fee, like a member of team. After that, we return his money back, and we have to we, we have to have one person more. There, there is no difference between selection ahead before championship and flying with two pilots during the championship. There is no difference. It's only different how to select pilots or not pilots. It's nothing about money, about cost. If you have two pilots, two warm-up pilots, definitely you have to uh, give them accommodation, meals and transportation from the airport to, to, to hotels and back. And fuel for airplane, nothing more. Um, while, you, while anyone is thinking about any further comments, I, I just take the mic again for one minute um, uh, about the selection by the jury. The, the idea um, is that the NACs would send their applications with all the relevant materials. So either it, it's about a pilot who is already well known by the community, hence by the jury, uh, who can also ask questions and so on. Uh, in, in which case uh, the, the suitability of the pilot is already uh, known or it's a new pilot not so well known and in this case it's also up to the NAC to, to bring the evidence that okay this guy has made the national championships at the corresponding level in the corresponding category uh, the, the, the whatever information that can help the jury take the educated decision if if uh, the jury uh, has a difficulty in, in this selection, they can still, uh, it's up to them to rely on, on whom they trust in the information the information that they need, uh, do you think this person is valid or not, and then the NAC can answer, etc. But it, it's, we, we need, a, the, the idea was to, to have a selection procedure, uh, which did not have any better idea than having this at least administered or handled by the, the jury. The jury is a neutral body in this election and I insisted that we should not give this responsibility to another party like the organizer. The organizer has no incentive to make sure that the Roma pilots are of the right standard. The, the jury as a SIVA body to enforce the rules have a better uh, 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 have the right level of incentive to, to achieve that. Any other idea coming? I would like just to add that uh, I fully agree with uh, that there needs to be some kind of selection. I still think that uh, uh, okay, the current the current available warm-ups uh, which will be which will be selected by some body like a jury or something can lead up to can lead up to higher costs 
for the organizer. I'm not saying that it will be, it will, uh, the cost will be higher or not. I'm just afraid of that this can happen. That's just what I only would like. How? Yeah, because, uh, for example, if we have a pilots in our country, they are going to compete or not training to compete at all. So if we would like to bring someone to the competition, uh, it will be French pilot, Russian pilot, who will be uh, there on site, or someone else who we have to pay the expenses for flying there. No. That's what I no, meant. No, no and no. <laughs> no, but I, I think this is completely wrong. It is very clearly stated that the organizer does not pay for the transportation of the aircraft and of the pilot to the site of the contest. But then he, he will not come then. What, what is happening today? Today you, today you have warmer pilots and it's exactly working like that. And they, and they come if they, if they are selected or invited. One more thing, I don't think we need to make the selection several months in advance of the competition. Because as Paul said, sometimes it, it's, it can be done on site, or at least, let's say, one month, but not several months. But Vladimir, uh, it, again, it, it's now the same situation. It, it wouldn't change the situation with the more far. <coughs> On the, on the notice of how long before this needs to be done, I, I think that this is, uh, I'm not sure this is fixed in, uh, in the proposal, but w there needs to be at least some, uh, some advance notice if we want people to take their respective uh, the flights and so on. I'd like only to mention that uh, it's a, a, a style of improvisation to find them on site just one day before, before uh, competition. So we have to have some, some pilot or to know about some pilot who is able to come. So we, are, we, we have some, you know, we have somebody in, in hands. Because after that, during the championship in the beginning first day, there is nobody, only one pilot from, uh, let's uh, say, home country. And if he is uh, ill or something else, we are lost. So to find it out from uh, the championship is also excellent if we know that all teams will have plus minus one or two pilots more. If not, we are... In the, in the end, I, I, I strongly believe it's, it's, it all has to do whether we take warmer pilot, the, the need for warmer pilot seriously or not. Any other comment or we probably need a vote on this one? If no further comments. Yeah. This one? But, uh, not, not the jury shall ensure that the experience is all right. The nuts shall ensure that the experience is all right. Well, uh, the, the jury selects based on applications. Yeah. Is it? Okay. The jury selects based on application, but yeah. uh, well, I, I don't can't understand what shall take steps to ensure that experience and capability. Okay, so we'll refine the wording yeah. in that direction. licenses of NOx and applications from NOx. Just for you, you said there's no, no months in advance, but it's stated in the document, set, set pilot several months prior to the event. That, I, I, was, I was misunderstood. I said I think there is no fixed amount. I know, that there, is, I know that there is an advanced uh, notice requirement.
But you need, you know, pilots no, need. I know, they, uh, not everything is there, and that's why you have to refer to the details. But yeah. you, you, you will not find. Uh, uh, for, for some of the warm-up pilots, they need to know in advance. Otherwise, they're simply not free. They don't have a uh, vacation or whatever. They need to get prepared. Uh, so even one month is, is, is clearly not, not enough. Does it give the flexibility for the organizer to change the warm pilot for whatever reason at the competition? Certainly not. Why? For what reason? Training, good point for whatever reason. Jury. It gives the flexibility to the jury. To the jury. Okay. What is. It, the, the wording that Elena. The wording that, that Elena is, is challenging is that in. In the details of, of this uh, proposal, if I remember correctly, it says that the international jury shall take steps to ensure that the warmer pilots has the, the qualification, etc. And the, this, this can be a bit misleading, is that in fact the responsibility to prove the suitability is within the NAC and the jury selects. Which so, statement is that? It is, it is, I, I know where it is. It is somewhere. Uh, no. Second paragraph. Uh, the, the second paragraph. The international jury shall take steps to ensure that experience and capabilities, etc. So we're re we are rewording that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I just would like to make sure that uh, uh, the organizer will not suffer from uh, any, let's say not uh, in uh, in advance not properly in advance selected uh, selected warm ups and uh, and let's say uh, who will be the final the final body responsible for having them on site that's that's my question so, just uh, i think we can maybe clarify that again in in the rule but first first question it's exactly like uh, the rest of the officials, like the judges and so on. The organizer has no responsibility then if we do this, okay? It's, it's a CIVA responsibility. Uh, second, um, I mean, if, if a warmer pilot is selected, uh, he, he has to come. If he has a, a something that obliges him not to come, then we have a situation, like in any situations people have to solve. And SIVA would have to solve that, as simple as that. Okay, thank you. So the responsible body is jury, then? Yes. Thank you. According to this proposal, yes. Uh, do we vote? So who is in favor of this proposal? Okay, so it looks like this proposal is adopted and we will refine the wording as we discussed. Uh, sorry, we have to ask who is against, sorry, excuse me. Who is against this proposal? Do you have a proxy or not? No. No. Not one. And then that means we have station. Can be kind of a trial time for the next year, and then see how it goes. <laughs> 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 that, uh, uh, the, the trial period uh, would be, I think, a good a good idea. But in general, not specifically for one for for one rule. We could, but this then goes back to SIVA procedures. In the procedures we have today, it's either in or out. Yeah, but some, some of the changes are kind of pretty clear. Some of the changes are... People are not sure what, how it will be implemented. So, like this one. 
if, if there is something wrong in the implementation or if people feel that what is being done is not right, then the current procedure is to issue another proposal. We'll see. Why not? <laughs> so that's also a controversial one somehow. It's about the hors concours pilots. We've had some debates. There was uh, also a working group working on that and discussing that uh, late last year. And this uh, turned out that we had several proposals from various countries on this topic. So the rules subcommittee um, presents the following. The requirement for all concours pilots to all have an FAI license, which was not specifically stated in our rules before. Uh, this brings once and for all full uh, compliance with the one way that the FAI rules could be interpreted. So this is now clear if we do like that. The, uh, on the other hand, it, it very clearly means that this has a consequence, of course, you can all recognize that, that no pilot, even au concours, would fly uh, who would not be in good terms with his NAC. That's obvious if we read this. In addition to that, there was also a clarification that HC pilots would be accepted after checking with uh, the NAC that they agree. Uh, I'm not sure this is necessary once we say that they need a, an FAI license because in principle it goes with it, but who knows? I don't know, maybe you can have an FAI license in another discipline or uh, and, and still, I don't know. Anyway, so this. Then, uh, the attempt here was to, to not mix the HC pilots or to mix them as little as possible with the rest of the official competition, uh, which means HC pilots would not appear in the final results as submitted to FAI. By that, we mean that it, they would still appear on the website SIVA results, but not on the FAI uh, uh, official results sent to them. Uh, and they would appear with their scores uh, s separately on the web pages if, uh, if uh, feasible practically. What is more important even is the last bullet point that the HC pilots would be grouped with a random uh, draw between them and flown first in each flight program. So it means that of course they are at a disadvantage here but they are not part of the official competition. We felt that with the new rule that there is a full random draw for all programs, it would be fairer for all pilots to have a chance to see a few flights uh, before having to fly themselves. So uh, this is also why we put that here. Any question, comment, I'm sure? Well, uh, first, kind of not a question, a remark. Um, well, on the proposal number eight, uh, it states that uh, all the applications should be available to only to the national air clubs. I think uh, we just need to put it there, including um, HC pilots. Just yeah, and um, well, it, it's a good idea to have the HC pilots to fly first in each program, but right now, in the rules, we have uh, the provision that if there is not enough time, uh, HC pilots do not fly. Does it stay? Yes. So, okay. Either they fly first or don't fly at all. Yes. Well, what if they already flown? <laughs> what if they have already flown for this program and the program is, <laughs> is not finished? Okay. And um, uh, talking about um, their results not being shown on the um, on the result on, on the ranking list, um, I have a question: Are you going to just not to show their results or not include their scores 
in their results. That's two different stories with their scores. Oh, okay, so actually you are going to have two sets of the results, one official and one not official, and it will change the uh, ranking of officially participating pilots. It can. If you, if you remove the HC pilot scores from the calculation, it can change the results. Excuse me, to be clear, uh, in, this, in this proposal, as of as today, the HC pilots are included in the FPS calculations. What we're talking about here is the way we present the results. It's, it was my question. That's the answer. No, uh, well, that's the, the first, when I asked the question, you, you showed me that with their scores, it means, well, it, it doesn't mean with their scores. So it means that their scores are still included to the calculations, but their results not. I think that's not... That's too difficult. Then it's a wording issue, uh, terminology. By, by that we mean that I, I, when you see the results, you have for the official pilots, you have their name, their country, etc., and they have 10,000 points. This is their score. The HC pilots, pilot uh, HC number two, would have 9,635 points, and this is indicated here. They, Today, you have on the, on, the, on the website, you have pilot number one, two, HC, three, four, HC, five, etc. You would have one, two, three, four, five, and at the bottom you would have HC one, HC two, HC three with their scores. It's a way to present. No, it's about, in the presentation, not to pollute the official results but by HC. still be on the final results with the on the on, on the SIVA page, yes. Yeah. Not on the. Uh, it's, not, it's not the same. No, but what is not the same? I don't understand. Vladimir, uh, uh, just uh, I think you have to understand that they for the FAI report, which is send it then to FAI. It will be still published with the HC on the left side, where are the numbers, but to the FAI will be sent a list where those lines, where is HC, will be just removed. No change in scores, no change in calculations. They will just be missing on those official uh, score sheets coming to FAI, if I understood correctly, Matthew. Yes. Uh, and on the web page, they still be there, but on... Yes, that, that is the idea. That is the idea. So, in essence, HC pilot or no HC pilot, this has an influence on the results because they are included in the FPS, yes, but why not? But for the rest, it's a matter of when they fly and how we present the results and the fact that they need to be uh, endorsed by their well, NAC. Well, just not uh, kind of clear what do you mean by separately on the web page, so it would be just probably an example that, okay, we have all the ranked pilots on top and then just... That is the idea. That, that, that is what was meant here, yeah. yeah. I would like to have a comment to the last point you have there, flown first in each flight program. I think by uh, adopting this we will completely remove the HC pilots from participating at the contest. Uh, if I'm thinking about now that we will probably have enough warm-up pilots then, but uh, because to come to the competition and to fly first or, or, or even and not, or not to fly, that's a quite, quite difficult uh, decision before the competition, I think. Uh, so that's just a comment. So, the, there is this comment, there is a risk, yes, Vladimir? Yeah, one more, please. Uh, if they will be flying first, and accidentally if they will be flying on the same aircraft, will it be possible to mix them with others? Or they must to fly first? No, I, I think all that is with a caveat, the same provision as for all the rest, uh, that you have a, a drawing for the order of flights for all the other pilots as well, and there is a provision for re, uh, reshuffling in case this happens. We need to keep, of course, this provision here. 
uh, we probably need to make a note on that in the rules as well. Any other comment, question? Right, so I think it's time to go for a vote on this one. Uh, who's in favor of this proposal number six? Without any, I have a hand who has no. Pietro. Pietro. Okay. Uh, then I forgot. Please, sorry. <laughs> oh. Raise high, please. Twenty-one. Who is against this proposal? Three? Four to be correct. It cannot be possible. Who? We what? have only 25 votes. There are 25 votes? Okay, sorry. Four? Yes. Okay. And we go to number seven. <laughs> so. This one is uh, a bit, looks like an editorial. It's, it simply says more or less that uh, the freestyle event uh, requires experience in power. Uh, you could, even though it's not written here, you could interpret that it means that also the freestyle entries should be for power. Um, I know there were some uh, instances in the recent past where there was a glider entry in, uh, in the final freestyle on the, uh, on the unlimited competition here in, in power, uh, which apparently raised some very nice emotions in the, in the public and in the people watching that. But the idea here is that the WAC is a power event. So you have this uh, clarification on this rule. Any question, comment? Any objection? All right. So here we come to what we've touched a little bit before, that entries are to be submitted by NACs only. And there, in the implementation of this uh, HC uh, a new wording, we will probably then, I think it's a good idea, implement the HC in also in this 125 including HC pilots. Yes. So it and means that... C from six. Remove, sorry? Remove C from uh, proposal 6. Okay. Yeah, we, we will implement uh, accordingly. Uh, any question, comment? Vladimir? Uh, I just would like to comment that uh, I think that every country which have delegate here have a little bit uh, different structure of the NEC headquarters of the organization. And I'm a little bit worried that uh, uh, having this just only through the, through the headquarters, just plainly as written there, can lead to some misunderstandings, which will be then a little bit painful. Just for clarification, do you mean that we, we should add in there or, or by a body uh, to which NAC delegates or...? Please. Okay, I totally agree that uh, entries may be done by NAC only. But I would not like to have the wording that the forms shall be available to NAC officials only. Because uh, I know that my glider body, I think they be, need sometimes to be reminded that these things are happening. So I would like to have access to the entry form and then go to the NAC and have it signed. Yes, Elena. 
Well, I think at every competition we have something like preliminary entry, and uh, in this pre preliminary entry form, there is a contact person specified by uh, the national air club or the national uh, air club offices. So then later on, it could be done by a contact person who is nominated by national air club. I just want to comment before that uh, I will be more happy if there will be stated to NAC representative than, than office only. I'm just talking about rewarding this. Uh, the same with me, uh, but because uh, at, on the pre preliminary entry form, uh, National Air Club specifies the representative, so later on it could be done through representative. I think uh, the reason for that, I don't exactly know the reason, but there were several cases when uh, uh, we had something like, well, even with online um, registration and so on, people uh, could come, go there and register not being even affiliated to the National Air Club or not, well, with, with some, some kind of uh, problems with the National Air Club, uh, Club and so on. It's uh, one thing and another thing, it would, uh, if we could hear the uh, HC pilots, it would, we would skip this uh, investigation by jury or whatever, whether the HC pilot is, uh, um, can, can fly the competition or not. Okay, I shouldn't go too close, they say. Uh, the proposal comes from Germany. Could I please uh, ask the German delegate to give us the reason for this proposal? Because I don't get it, actually. Will be answered by Jürgen because he's the representative of the... Yes. The, though I... I <laughs> Philip, uh, though I'm not the delegate of Germany, I'm the author of this very short proposal. And let me comment a little bit. Uh, first, I agree to the modification that it might be written uh, only the NACs or authorized people, which might be a delegate. That for me is an official entry to the NAC. The background to this proposal is that in the actual year we faced the situation uh, that a pilot from Germany entered into an international competition not ever having flown any competition on that level before. That happened, and uh, the reception of this pilot was valid. Finally, the pilot withdrew from this participation. But that is a situation uh, our rules, our actual rules, could lead to. And we must, must, must make a fence or something else that this may not be happen. And that is the reason why I asked for making available all the documents only to the NACs so that, so that unauthorized people do not make something wrong with that. That is the background to this proposal. Is your question answered, Philip? Uh, uh, Manfred. I just uh, would suggest that uh, we uh, replace NAC offices by NAC representatives. Then uh, we're not talking about an institution, but about persons. So, uh, so first of all, uh, so it, it doesn't necessarily mean delegate, by the way, because in, so, in some countries you can have a NAC and a federation, and the NAC can delegate to the federation. Uh, it, it's, uh, it can be, you have different setups, you know, so if we take a general wording like or an authorized uh, 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 representative uh, from the NAC, that should fix that. So Jürgen, just to make sure I got this correctly, it's actually a safety issue. Right?
do not like to undergo, undergo our qualification regulations on the national championship, but say, oh, it's a nice thing to be at an international competition. I do not need to be qualified. I go as an HC card into that competition. We do not want this. We do not feel happy with such a situation, having a provider undergoing our system and working hard on the sporting event. And the other one says, hey, I'm a lucky one, I do not go to the nationals, I will go to the international. We do not like it. We do not uh, see, want to see this in the future. Okay, to the yes, let me just uh, give my answer on this first. The safety issue, from my point of view, would probably automatically solve by the chief judge uh, taking this guy down if he's, not, if he's not flying safe. Second, I don't think it's the, it's the duty of SIBA to cover a national selection process. Sorry to say. I, I, I fully understand you, Jürgen. I fully understand you. But I don't think it's a SIVA business. Okay, why I'm against, sorry, why I'm against, I think it should be, it should be, there should be a door kept open to people who have, let's say, it was mentioned before, I think from Elena, some problems with their aero club. You might remember some situations in the past. We probably wanted to have these guys flying, but for some reason they weren't allowed to fly, for whatever reason. So should we, in an extreme, manner in an extreme position exclude good pilots just because they're not announced through the aero club i remember you that in unlimited categories glider and power we have diminishing numbers okay i'm that's just my position i think uh, this thing is or has become superfluous by the approval of uh, 2014-6 about uh, the uh, HC entries. There will be no HC entries in the future without national uh, air sport uh, control approval. And uh, so, so this, is, this is redundant. No, I, I speak in, uh, on behalf of the U.S., I speak in favor of this proposal with the modification that the NAC or its representative be uh, the only one through which uh, this entry form would come in. In the U.S., uh, air sporting powers are delegated to various uh, organizations in the country. Uh, that, so the, the, this is why, uh, for example, aerobatics is handled by one organization, modeling and so on. But it's still respects the structure, the National Aero Club structure, or the National Air Sports Control structure of the FAI. To let pilots enter a championships without it being routed and approved by the NAC in that country, to me undermines the structure of the FAI. This, you, you cannot disrespect the members of the FAI who pay their subscriptions, and who, uh, of course, uh, attend the general conference and are the members of the organization. Uh, when we organized the WAC this year, uh, I, act, I asked, acted as an advisor to the organizers and I said that every entry form that you receive, please verify and look for proper signatures or some indication that this came from a proper source. What we cannot have is individual pilots downloading an entry form off a website and then sending it into the organizer without having anything to do with the NAC. That's not acceptable. Otherwise, it, it destroys the structure of the FAI, which is its member organizations. To this, that uh, it's also an issue if we limit the number of official participants per country, this has to be controlled nationally. Well, I, I just want to um, answer Pig's uh, remarks. I hate the situation where that we have uh, several very capable pilots not participating in the international competition. 
but at the same time, when uh, uh, the entry as HC pilots was accepted, it was a big issue with the uh, Federation, between the Federation and, and SIVA. So probably there, there should be other ways to fix the situation. Probably uh, SIVA could make some steps to kind of mediate the um, controversy within NUC without kind of pushing them but trying to solve the problem because yes, we have some good pilots who cannot participate the the competition but uh, we heard both sides stories and it looks like there should be somebody who will sit between them and try to 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 fix it because when, when you hear both parties both have some right words to to say blaming the other ones so it, it, it probably see what, instead of just letting some pilots fly or not letting some pilots fly, try to talk to both parties and, and fix it somehow. But yes, the uh, entry should be done through the next. First of all, it's a safety issue, yes. Has everything been said on that or any further comment? Yes. Manfred. Just one remark. I have never seen an official entry form which did not have at the bottom a line which said approval of NAC, signature, date and stamp. And uh, any entry form which doesn't carry that approval by the NAC is void and should never, never be accepted. Nick. Uh, this is a very quick comment. Uh, I'm looking at the entry form for WAC now, and on the entry form for WAC this year, there is a line that says uh, National Airsport Control and there's a, a line for signature, and then it says or, or's concourse. So the entry form for WAC did allow or's concourse pilots to enter without their national airport control approval. Mike. Uh, that's not exactly accurate. Even though it was not on the entry form, uh, what the organizers did and I did on their behalf was to check to be sure through the president of SEBA that all of those uh, HC pilots were approved or were okay by their NAC. All received that. All right, time for a vote on this one then. Uh, I or it is here. No, no, what, okay, it is, it, it is in the form and Mike says that, it, that all that was checked afterwards. I understand, but the form does not require this. But you, you remember we adopted a previous proposal, uh, number six, where we say that HC pilots would be included in the same process, so this w should sure. be removed. I'm just responding. Who is in favor of this? Ah, Vladimir. The rewording is, okay, let me summarize first then. This proposal number eight, we say, we say then in terms of rewording that we would change entries to be submitted by NACs only by entries to be submitted by uh, NACs or NAC, NACs authorized representatives only. Uh, if, if you agree, I'm not sure that we need the, uh, the next sentence on the entry forms availability because once we have that, everything should be covered. And then, in terms of implementation, we will implement part of, of the number six, but this is more editorial now, part of number six uh, in a number eight, where we say that this will also include HC, which we already approved. Is that clear? Who is in favor of this updated version?
22. Against? Two. Yes. Right, so this proposal is adopted. Next, number nine. Next, number nine. So, what do we have here? Uh, that should be an easy one. Oh, you never, you never know. But you never say that. Uh, <laughs> does anyone need an explanation of what? Is, is behind that one, or can we move forward if there is no question? Another easy one. Some people were disturbed that in the drawing, uh, judges could be here. Uh, so they prefer to see the main axis here. Uh, this is an editorial change, and this will be done. This does not change the rule. Uh, number 11 is again something that is not directly linked to the rule book or not at all. It's about a method to analyze the known proposals. You've read probably all the Russian proposal number one on that with a table with marks on uh, various criteria and, and uh, uh, summing up, uh, etc. This relates to processes. Therefore, discussion here in the floor in terms of processes. Do we want, do you want this method to be applied to allow a selection, to allow a better educated selection of the known, or do you want something else? It's up to you. Comment, question? No comment, no question. Everybody's sleeping already. Uh, do, in, terms, in terms of uh, procedure, do we have to vote on that? To, uh, no, but here we're not talking about removing or adding a working group. It's. No, no. And it's uh, it's about it, it, it's about a proposal of on how to uh, to uh, rate the knowns by the working group. Uh, do we need a majority, two thirds, uh, eight ninth majority? Okay, um, I, I can I can give okay Mike before. to your uh, request for comments. What Matthew and everybody, what they're talking about is the spreadsheet that was provided on page 52 of the, uh, the uh, all the proposals that were considered by subcommittee, page 52. And this was a spreadsheet that was provided by Russia on how to analyze the sequences. Uh, our only comment is uh, on originality. That was the one we didn't know exactly what how you would do that I mean up to now the working groups have uh, done uh, used it, most of these other factors anyway figures qualifying for the aerobatic level safety positioning versatility height and uh, speed considerations G look and that sort of thing but originality is something uh, I don't understand what that means so uh, I would propose that that particular line be deleted from the spreadsheet, but the rest of the spreadsheet be adopted. We would, we, would, uh, we would look upon this as a useful tool for the working group uh, in its analysis of the sequences. I, I think the basic idea is quite good. Sure. Well, uh, when uh, the known sequence before was included to the overall ranking, uh, every time in the known sequences there was something new which you wouldn't have in the free programs, which is not allowed in unknown programs, and so on. Some new figures which are not used in the catalog, some new uh, composition of figures like uh, now we have more and more of uh, 
let's say, aileron uh, roll plus uh, snap roll or snap roll, snap roll combinations, some uh, figures which are not in the free programs, not in the unknown programs. So I think this is stand for originality, something new in, in the sequence. Alan. And I just, the thing that concerns me most about this is very prescriptive, um, particularly where it refers to safety. I don't think I can grade safety from 0 to 10. If I think the sequence is unsafe for some reason, then I have to give 0 for everything in the sequence and say that I don't think the sequence is suitable. I can't just downgrade it a little bit by giving it, you know, 2 out of 10 for safety. Um, so um, I, I think this is a guide, but I wouldn't want to be constrained entirely by it. Elena? Uh, I think in this case, maybe rephrase this uh, proposal. Um, let's ask the uh, working group to kind of recreate the um, spreadsheet or find the uh, criteria with which to regard all the sequences. Because now, for uh, most of, well, not most of the time, but uh, I think the goal for, for the uh, working group uh, anal which analyzed the sequences were well, right, mostly the um, safety issue. So this proposal was to add to safety some different criteria. So probably we could ask the working group to find out the criteria they will use to give their analysis to the delegates. Can we do it, refer to the working group, ask them to uh, yeah. clarify yeah. this uh, analysis? But not just specify only safety. But so I, I guess this is a yes. Uh, so summary, we, we give to this uh, non-analysis working group also the duty to review, refine, improve the methodology. Uh, I, w I have also a bit of a question. Maybe this can also be included for the non-analysis working group. Later on, we have a proposition num uh, proposal number 17, around 17, that deals with the selection for the knowns. Uh, so we can also include th that as a task for the for the working group to to investigate because in in this proposal number 17 you have a proposal to have some uh, ranking uh, from uh, first to last uh, sequence uh, based on uh, 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 scoring from 0 to 10 more or less what has been has been done in the last uh, couple of years in the uh, non analysis working group uh, so how does that fit together? Would this spreadsheet be a tool to help do the scoring and the ranking or would it supersede or whatever? I think that's all a good subject for the working group. Yeah. Do you all agree? Okay, so working group. Let's go to number 12, the next one. So. This is now a procedure for judging and video conferences. Uh, this is about uh, also uh, uh, a review of uh, the current regulations and making it a little bit more uh, consistent in terms and, and, and complete in terms of how we solve uh, HZ issues. Uh, are there any questions or comments? And for any answer, I will give the microphone to John, so get ready. No comment, no question? Everything clear? Any objection? Ah. I just quickly want to make a note here. Uh, let uh, B, such discussion shall not interfere with the subsequent flights. 
I hope you all agree that this sometimes is not reality because it's just not possible to go on before a certain problem is resolved. I hope everybody's clear on this. It's in the rule already, it's not a change. I just wanted to highlight this, that sometimes a problem needs to be resolved before flying is going on. John? Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Questions? Objections? No objection? All right. Next one. Then, number 13. Uh, it's also something uh, dealt with by the uh, judging subcommittee in terms of the definition of the board of judges, assistance and qualification. I give the mic to John. Yes, this was introduced because of the, our experience with the e-learning system, but the uh, Bureau discussed yesterday and we decided that for the time being the e-learning system would only be used to replace the currency test which is in paper form or PDF at the moment. So in fact using it to select the judges is, is in fact withdrawn. Yeah, it's intention to do this in the future. Um, quite a few years ago, uh, we uh, set the minimum of uh, judges for the competitions, seven, uh, except the, for year 52 uh, is five. I think some time in the editing, it disappeared from the um, rules, so I think we need to... I, well, well, okay, probably I didn't find it, but if it's not there, we still need to put that minimum of seven judges for the competition and five judges for year 52. And another thing is uh, um, in clause A of 2132, it's, we still don't have this um, definition of appropriate category for, for the judges. Well, um, the judge must have either judged at the na uh, national or international um, aerobatic com championships at the appropriate category. I un answer that immediately. We have another proposal later on that deals with that. Okay. Uh, it is in uh, what you said before, uh, uh, five and seven, it is in the rules, in fact, in, as, as a minimum. Uh, so the idea here that there is no, uh, there is only one category of judges, which are the judges uh, which are considered by SIVA, and therefore they are all are el eligible to travel allowance as they are defined, and so on. Uh, so that's the first change. Uh, this is the part to summarize for everyone. This second bullet is the part that John talked about that is withdrawn from the proposal, that the judging test will not, until further notice, until further proposal, be used in the selection process. And the rest remains. Everything clear for everyone? Is this what you want, Chuck? So, and, and definition for appropriate category, we have another proposal later on to uh, rediscuss that point. What remains is everything except this one today. Okay? Here, on the last bullet point, which uh, gives the requirements for the judge currency to have judge in the year or the year before at national or international championships in appropriate category pending further definition later on today or tomorrow, this remains. Any other comment or question? No? Any objection? Yeah, you have time to think? The mic goes over there. I can't think there's no break. <laughs> it's 
Excuse me, we are talking about number of judges. The suggestion is up to 10? No, the, the rule here does not deal with the number of judges. It says that the, what, is defined, what is defined in the rules is that all judges are of the same uh, standard and will be eligible to the same travel allowance, cost reimbursement, etc. In terms of the number of judges, which is today between 7 and 10 uh, in, uh, in uh, advanced and limited and 5 and, I don't know, 7 in YAC 52, this r will remain open for debate until we get another proposal. Elena? And? Ah, yes. Yes, what is not there is the judging test used in selection process. Okay, so again, define satisfactory. Okay. Okay, I might have thinked about it, thought about it. Maybe we should remove the fourth point as well because you said there's another proposal dealing with it, just not to create a, a, a contradictory case. So only the first one and the third bullet remains, and the second and the fourth is removed. Because you said there's for the fourth one there's going to be another proposal. Okay, uh, uh, we need to maybe to look immediately to the, to the, to the other one then, because I, I, I need to, we need to double check whether all the rest is already included. Let me give you the reference of the other one. It's number 21. Thank you. So, yes, we can remove it. So, uh, here, this remains, so we can remove the, the, the <laughs> bullet point over there. Yes, so only the first and the third. Yes. Do you want to discuss that now, maybe then? No. No? Okay, so, right. Any objection then to point number one plus number three? Ah, yes, that was your question. So, yes, and I give the mic to the expert. Maybe remove the, the satisfactory. satisfactory because this was all lined up with using the learning system. In, in, the, uh, in the proposal itself, if you look at the document where you have this proposal number 13, we remove satisfactory on the study course, on, the, on everything where it's mentioned today. I don't remember the exact wording, but I uh, will do. So, with that in mind, we have a comment question from Mike. Yeah, a question for John. Uh, something I didn't notice when we were discussing this at subcommittee is that now, before the selection will take place, uh, these judges and assistants uh, that are being considered for selection must have satisfactorily completed the course first before the selection, correct? That's what the proposal says. Uh, normally, as, as I remember, uh, your first uh, round of letters inviting uh, judges to uh, uh, participate at championships based on the JPD is, has been done as early as December. I think sometimes you started that process right after we get home from plenary. If now we have to wait for the results of a study course, 
to be completed by prospective candidates for those judges' positions, does that mean that the selection process will be delayed further? Or what, what do you anticipate will be the schedule for the selection? I think this whole e-learning system, the whole intention of these proposals was to get the it recognized within SEVA regulations. But following our meeting yesterday, when we discussed the whole business and decided we would carry on using the system, but just in place of the currency test, but not as a selection process, then this whole thing is withdrawn. It is not being used in the selection process at all. The e-learning system will be used merely as, it, as the test is right now, that before the judge appears at the contest, he would have had to have gone through that system. That's it. So. Clear, uh, then, on the original proposal, which is on page 11 of the document, 2132B, then I take it that the changes that are proposed there are withdrawn also. Is that correct? Yeah. Because now it would say before the championships yeah, is held, they must have done the test. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Correct. So, if you have the original uh, RSC document proposal, <coughs> RSC document in front of you, I repeat, 2132B changes are then withdrawn. With all that in mind, for those of you who have uh, followed everything, is, uh, do you have any other comment, question? Is it clear enough? Do you have any objection? No? So this is adopted and we will, uh, of course, implement those updates as discussed here. We took some notes. And we can move to number 14. Boundary infringement. This has to do with how we record the boundary infringements and the observation that in uh, some cases in competitions uh, the the real outs are judged uh, not, not valid simply because the boundary judging because of lack of experience of the sequences might indicate on the form a wrong figure number which then makes the out void and this is an attempt to fix that by giving a possibility to also record some timing, whatever that is in the end, some timing of when the outs occur. Any question, comment on that? Yes. It's connected to the proposal of, of Russia. Uh, the expeditor proposer, I guess. Maybe it would be uh, better to speak uh, together with these proposals to remove the boundary judges from. No, that is something completely different. Here we're talking of we're talking of <laughs> you have boundary judges, and this is what is proposed. And then, if later on we say there are no boundary judges. This will, of course, be uh, removed, but I would, <laughs> I would prefer that we fix the normal proposals first, of course, knowing that there might be some implications later on. But uh, if you have comments on this before we move to the expedited proposals, then it's time to, to voice that. So I have some comments if no, nobody has. <laughs> uh, I fully understand, of course, the principle behind all that, as I, I think I summarized before. I find this a bit difficult to implement in reality. 
uh, at least we need to find a way to implement it because boundary judges may not have synchronized their watches at the briefing because they are not at the briefing, uh, and so on and so forth. So in terms of procedure, this needs to be properly managed. Philip. Um, I'm sorry I have to intervene. That's what we do in Glider since, at least since I'm chief judge. Exactly this, timestamp, number of seconds, timestamp, number of seconds. It's handleable. Then you, then you will just put a uh, time and then he came out. In, in gliders, we record seconds out of box. Yes. So the time stamp is the time of the observation of out of the box seconds. And this can happen several times in a flight, possibly, eventually, could be. The, the difference, uh, Philip, is that in your procedure, each boundary judge can record the amount of time this was out, or is, does the boundary judge note the absolute hour of in and out, or out and in? Well, the, the boundary judges normally for me get the advice to write down each occurrence of a box out, but at the end of the day, transmit to me the total of seconds. So on their protocol, they have every occurrence, and I get the total number of seconds. Yeah, and this is where we have a major difference. It's easier, it's easy for a boundary judge to record the number of seconds where uh, uh, a pilot is out with a watch that is completely out of time. Here we're talking about determining on which figure a pilot has an out. Because you have two opposite boundary judges and they need to be aligned that so that the out is, is valid, okay? So either they all get right the figure number, that it's in, on figure seven that there's an out, because that's how we implement the penalty, or if we are, if we are to say, okay, the boundary judge are not sure about the, actually the, 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 the figure number in which this was an out because they're not uh, aerobatic pilots, and they may have missed that uh, this is figure six, seven, or eight, or whatever. Then another possibility to make sure that this is properly recorded is to say this occurred at, at this given time, and so that the two opposing boundary judges can be consistently uh, uh, can have some consistent data. So that that's uh, that's completely different in terms of. I don't agree, Matthew. We, I don't agree. We have two line judges looking at the same line, the baseline. They look at the same line and they write, write down the same exit, the same amount of seconds, both. I, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I meant, I meant the two judges looking at the same line, they need to have the same data, not the opposing one. I made a mistake. But it doesn't change what I said before. We don't record the same thing. If we record like that, we need an absolute time or a, a relative time from the start of the sequence or whatever, but we need to implement it in a way that works. Matthew, as I said, they put down a timestamp and write down, at this time, this occurrence happened. It's exactly the same whether it's a figure or whether, whether he's flying out of the box. You need a timestamp. And this timestamp is a pretty good idea with synchronized clocks. On the morning briefing. Yes, <laughs> nobody well, I completely disagree with the statement that the boundary judge can be so inexperienced that not to recognize the figure. That's the situation which is not acceptable. But, that's but it, it happened because I didn't pay attention at what can lines I, are right. Again, the it's judge shouldn't, okay. it shouldn't be the case. The yes, judge I, I is there to pay attention. Yes. So if, if if we can't, if we can't have such judges, we don't have. We can't have, we can't have, we can't have judges. Is it, is it okay? Are you sure? Let me tell you where this came from. Um, we've had competitions. I mean, WAC, for example. Boundary judges for absolutely excellent. Uh, probably all aerobatic judges, no problems. Um, other competitions we had in the last couple of years, we were using volunteers because the regulations say we have to have line judges that weren't aerobatic judges. In fact, most of them were students who haven't even seen aerobatics before. 
and they did actually a pretty good job. The only problem was that in this particular contest I'm thinking about, um, they also had a second problem that they were, the terrain, there were bushes and trees in between them, so they could only see part of the box. That was the second problem. So they weren't actually seeing the whole flight, and they weren't familiar with the resty. We briefed them as best they could, and then the plane would come out, they would call it accurately, it would be recorded absolutely accurately at the chief judge's workstation. No problem with that. We could see it's out. They've caught it out. It's verified. No problem. But they might, on occasions, have written it down out against the wrong figure. And then a whole series of pilots use that as a technicality for raising protests. Now, if you do it in this manner, and I agree there's a problem with the synchronization of the watch, but I think Pick has just told us it's done a different way in gliders. And with the timestamp, that would solve that problem completely. All is this is is a verification by each individual line judge on a piece of paper that can be seen by the pilot so that he's satisfied that that line out was accurate. So that's all. Thanks. Right, other comments? No? Who, any objections on this proposal? Adopted then? Intermediate championships. Uh, you know that we've adopted, uh, was it last year, uh, the intermediate championship uh, in, uh, in our rules. And now this is about saying that we would label the intermediate championships, the, the, the worldwide one, the World Intermediate Aerobatic Championships with an FAI first category event status, which, by the way, if we adopt this name, it is then, as a consequence, the first category event. Uh, and of course, then champion status in intermediate added accordingly. Uh, I, I give the mic to John first and then Elena. Yeah, just to, a slight correction to what you said then. It was actually originally adopted as a class two event. Okay, that was what SEVA adopted. If you then go and look at what a definition of a class two event in the FAI statutes, it does not match uh, what this particular championship is. So, sorry, and I'll give you the, the, the mic in one minute. Uh, the reason I disagree with what you say, John, is if it's a World Aerobatic Championships, then it's automatically a first category event, according to the FAI rules. What we adopted last year was not this wording. We adopted the Intermediate International Contests, and this is where we have a difference in interpretation. And with that, I give the mic to Elena. I just would like to remind that uh, there was a proposal about the World Intermediate Aerobatic Championships, which was not accepted by SIVA because it's, well, uh, anyway, uh, later because. Uh, <laughs> but it was not accepted. And last year, yes, it was rephrased that, okay, some international competitions, and it's why they tried to make it like category two, which is not applicable because SIVA, if SIVA uh, agrees to a competition, it's automatically class one. No, no. What? If SIVA needs to, to approve the competition, it, it's the class one. But anyway, this is not the world. But what I'm trying to to talk See against is the World Intermediate Aerobatic Championships, because with the airplanes not being restricted by anything, this is just uh, the event for pilots who are not up with their skills to be the world championship yet. They they are flying capable airplanes with the small programs. So how can we 
make them world champions. It actually stands now, this, uh, the same stands for advanced category because if the advanced, uh, advanced airplanes are not restricted anymore, it's actually the same case because the advanced category was created with the different goals. But uh, advanced category at least exists right now. Why we need to create the category which is n not up to the world championships level. If you restrict the category with something uh, like, I don't know, Cessna Arabat, as it was mentioned here, or something like that, yeah, you could regard it as the world championship on restricted airplanes. But without restriction, this is not going to be the world in championships. I think Elena <laughs> actually has just made the point that I would have made. The same applies to the advanced category then. So the same logic, why should we have a world champion at advanced level? It's exactly the same logic. Any other comment? Yes. Chapter 3, and there is para 3 1, and then others national championships or championship, a national sporting title is national champion, international by Nats, and so on, so on, world championship, an international sporting event open to participants from all Nats and in which the winner is awarded by title a world champion. No other interpretation, sorry. So well, that's what I said. If, if the label is world championships, which is not today in our SIVA regulation, but if we adopt this wording in our SIVA regulations, world championships, then it's automatically a category one. And I think what we're discussing is not so much category one or two, but the title itself. E events, yes. No, I, I think I, I, I think the, the debate is not a, so much about category one or category two. The debate is about world championships and world champion or not. Uh, and and also to be to be fully transparent and honest, so that everyone can make an educated guess, uh, uh, an ed educated vote on that. You, we have to know that also the other, on the other hand side that if we have the world championships it means probably that this attracts people, uh, that this develops the sport and that they pay entry fees and sanctioned fees. Uh, we have to recognize that as well. Any other comments? Question? John. A few years ago um, when South Africa bid for the first advanced championship, it was actually referred to in the regulations at that time as class two. Have you ever tried to attract a sponsor to something marked class two? And um, we, at that stage, called it the proposed to see whether it become the advanced world aerobatic championships, and it was accepted. And we've run many successful ones, not South African necessarily, since then. And it is now the biggest category, I think, in powered aerobatics. Um, it's the same here. I understand completely where Elaine is coming from. But again, try to sell to a sponsor. Um, we're going to have a class two event, which is not a world championship. And we'd like your money, please. Category two. Okay. It's just a question of uh, if you want to call it the World Intermediate Cup or something, I guess it's not a train smash, but please not category two. We have to put a name to it. Yes. Uh, is this still working? Yes. I would like to just add a few, few notes. If we will start to speak a little bit in numbers, 
Uh, we currently can expect for next year around 30, 30 competitors in unlimited category and we are expecting around 30 officials. Uh, in advanced category we can expect around 80 competitors. Uh, the advanced category, I think, was intend to be uh, something which will bring more pilots into unlimited. I believe that if we will start to create, uh, I don't know, Rog Rogalo Aerobatic Championship uh, or, or even in Sportsman Intermediate and stuff like that, we will even reduce from those highest categories the number of pilots and so on. Uh, a second comment or second point is regarding the number of champions around the world. I think that the unlimited pilots and uh, the advanced pilots probably as well, but mostly the unlimited category is the most expensive one. And I also think that if there is a every single year a huge number of people who have world champion title, it's a little bit spreading that Okay, it's a little bit misunderstood by the by the different media and different possible partners for the for those top level categories. So that's just a comment for discussion. Thank you. Alan. I just reflect on what we do at home. And every year we have uh, national championships in four different categories, levels of competition, and we call each one of the people who wins each of those levels, we call them the national champion at that level. Um, uh, and we don't, I don't f have any problems about that. Um, nobody else in our association has a problem with that. I imagine most of the other countries here also have national championships and possibly declare national champions in, in, different, in different categories. Um, it would be hypocritical of me to say that what I do nationally, I can't do internationally. Any other comment, question, observation? No? So, Elena? Can anybody name any other kind of sport where such a situation exists when uh, people with limited skills can win uh, the world champion title. I think at the national level it's a completely different story and it depends on the nation. We also have the champions in different categories but uh, other, uh, our pilots mostly fly limited airplanes in advanced category uh, and Yak-52 only in Yak-52 category and so on. So it's kind of, there is a logic in naming them national champions in certain categories. Another thing they use this name with the category and in the world we always hear this world champion, world champion, world champion without e even mentioning category and it, it's misleading and it's de it diminishes the title of the world champion. And again, anybody can tell, any, can anybody name any other kind of sport with a limited skill sportsman being named as the world champion. Junior. Junior. It's a limit. It's a limit. It's junior. Mm -hmm. Vladimir. Just something a little bit funnier to this discussion. I have notes here from Mr. Bizik. Uh, you probably, some of you already heard those uh, words. He always says that uh, the normal unlimited category is like the 100 meters run and uh, advance is like 100 meters run for smokers. <laughs> so the intermediate will be probably for some disabled people. Yes, yeah, smokers and uh, really drunk people. That's what I have as a note from him. John. Vladimir, it's not a joke. You might think it's funny, but somebody here is trying to get a new category going to develop aerobatics. And comments like that are uncalled for. Thank you. I agree. I apologize once more. I'm not 
trying to have bad comments on the category itself. I'm just saying that intermediate world champion is not the best thing to consider to have. Any other comments? Uh, I, I take also from some of the comments that there might be, uh, I don't know if, the, if this is the appropriate time for that or not, but there might be some options in terms of naming, uh, still calling it, ex excuse me, st still calling it a world championship, but uh, something like what we, what we said before. We have juniors world champion in many sports. This is a very clear limit on the age. Here, it's a, it, would, it might be about a limit on the, the fact that the people are, uh, have not practiced aerobatics for 20 years, so it can be, I don't know, the future champions, uh, uh, world championship. I, 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 I don't have the name, but it, 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 could it, could it, could, would there be a way to, to help both uh, uh, develop this category and attract sponsors and making clear that this is not a, a whole discipline in itself, where you have the most skilled people in this particular discipline trying to gain a title. Uh, I don't have the, the solution for that. This is why I'm saying I don't have, I don't know if uh, we can discuss it right now. So any reaction from the floor? Either we vote on this one or what, we, what do we do? Find the fancy name, but don't use the word intermediate aerobatic championships. Find a fancy name for, for name this competition with the name of the main sponsor or whatever, but not the world intermediate aerobatic championship. We are not against the competition themselves. Against the, the difficulty in this debate, the, the difficulty in this debate is that if we if we come to this conclusion, uh, we can only actually conclude if we find a name for which we are certain that this does not undermine the uh, the the uh, this intermediate category to to develop and to attract sponsors and and so on and. Are we there yet? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So what, what would be any, any advice from anyone on how to proceed? Do you want a vote now on this proposal? John? How about the World Intermediate Aerobatic Challenge? Challenge, World Intermediate Aerobatic Challenge. So who would be, uh, the, the, the title would be, you are the intermediate challenger? <laughs> Winner of the uh, But uh, uh, John, John, seriously, uh, do you feel that this would still be okay with how you want to develop this? Seriously, no. Okay. <laughs> Just to add, uh, we've so far had um, in interest from, uh, I'm sure Carol knows, from uh, definite from Canada, from Australia, from New Zealand, um, from Scandinavia, um, UK. There's lots of people who have said they would love to come to this championship. Um, so whatever we call it, <laughs> I think it's got to reflect the fact that a whole lot of nations are going to appear at a championship, fly before international judges, and be awarded FAI medals. So what do you call it if you don't call it a world championship when by definition the world countries are entering? More people come to the Sportsman World Championship. <coughs> yes. Mike? Uh, we speak in favor of the proposal. Uh, the U.S. will vote for it. 
uh, I can tell you that if it's not the World Intermediate Aerobatic Championships, that none of the U.S. pilots who have indicated a desire to go south to South Africa will go. So if you name it something else, to them it will be just another regional, local competition. And they will not spend the money and spend the time to go to South Africa, period. I think it's well established here now how various delegates feel about this. I'd call upon uh, Matthew to uh, take a vote on this. I think the discussion has run too long. Right. Then let's go. Who is in favor of this proposal? Thirteen. Who, who is against? Ten. Ten against. Ten two abstention. Yes. And me too. France too. Uh, which means we have a majority here. Yes. And the proposal is adopted. 13. 13, 10, 13 in favor, 10 against, and 2 abstention. Right, so now completely different subject technicalities on judging downgrades of lines between rows and half loops. <coughs> I want to give the mic to uh, the judging subcommittee on that one. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we have on a number of occasions in the past uh, found it very difficult to decide how to treat the lines and half loops situation. Um, it's been assumed in the past that if the line before or after a half loop between the row and the half loop was very long, then a hard zero should apply. But there is nothing in section six that determines um, how or when that should happen. So to simplify this, uh, the United Kingdom proposes that whereas at the moment the, the regulation says that uh, if there is a line between a roll and a half loop, there should be a minimum of two points downgrade and there is no further advice, that we change this to a minimum of one to make it consistent with most of the rest of uh, arrestee judging and we put a, a maximum limit of four. So for instance, uh, if a pilot flies a half loop and there is supposed to be a roll after it and he pauses for uh, a considerable time before flying the correct roll, then we should apply a four marks downgrade, a maximum of four marks. If the roll is wrong, of course, then the figure becomes a hard zero. So, any comments on that one? Uh, Manfred was first. We discussed this uh, proposal at length in the Glider subcommittee and uh, we rejected it with only one abstention. The reason is it contradicts the rule which says that any figure flown which does not correspond with what is drawn on uh, form B or C should be marked hard zero. If someone flies a half loop on one side of the box and a roll on the other side of the box, I'm sorry, that is two separate distinct figures and not one figure, and therefore it should be marked hard zero. And second question, since when is preserving judges' RIs an overriding consideration in our rule mark making? Well, that is the main reason why this proposal was made. It is even written in there that the judges should not give hard zeros in that case in order not to hurt their RIs.
who wanted the mic? Nick? Okay, Manfred, if I've given the impression that, that the judge's RI was the precious thing and pilots came second, then I apologise. That was not the case. Um, I, it is a fact that, that uh, uh, and in my chief judge position, I have twice uh, been in very difficult to resolve situations of power competitions. Of course, this would be um, rather difficult to do at a glider competition, but at power competitions where a pilot has flown a half loop and then drawn a line of some length, a clear line, and then flown a roll. And I've ended up with five judges giving a mark and five judges giving a hard zero, and nobody wants to give way. Um, I'm simply trying to move away from the option of the hard zero when the pilot has, has momentarily forgotten what he's doing and takes a little time to remember and incurs a downgrade. I, I want the downgrade to be from one to, I, I have suggested four, because four is the maximum downgrade that we give to errors in other parts of geometry, um, and that we get away from hard zero. Uh, th there is no description in either your catalogue or, or, our, or you know, your section six part two or our section six part one, there is no clear description of when you should change from a downgrade to a hard zero. Um, a secondary effect is that it becomes difficult for judges to agree in the end and somebody has to make a breaking decision and if a judge has made a hard zero for what he thinks is two figures and the other judges haven't, then somebody has to suffer and it is the judges. The judges RI gets hit. Now that's a secondary effect and that's, that's not the prime reason here. <coughs> we, we simply have something that's hard to resolve on the judging line. Uh, I tried last year to, to resolve this by putting a timing element in it, but, but that was thought to be too complicated for judges. Um, I'm now trying to resolve it by making the downgrade from one to four. Uh, simply, I mean, four is a pretty big downgrade. Uh, I, I, I would seek further guidance, if you like, but um, somehow we have, to, we have to resolve exactly when a hard zero should be given and it can't be defined clearly. It's quite a long line, um, three, four, or five seconds, I don't know. I, I, I don't like to use extreme examples to, to try and illustrate because clearly if somebody flies a half loop and then one kilometre later flies a roll, we're, we're, we're trying to, to resolve something which is just silly. But if, if there's a line of, I don't know, one, two, three seconds in a, in a power competition, which does happen, pilot gets to the top of a half loop and, and then says to himself, oh dear, is it a, a one and a half or three by two or, or whatever. I, I want a way to resolve that without resorting to arguments on the judging line because it's damaging for, for pilots and it's damaging for judges. Just to add another problem to what Nick has uh, just said, if you uh, forget the role or whatever or delay it significantly and the judges come to a hard zero then the next thing they have to do when the role is performed is um, add an insertion penalty as well so it's a double jeopardy the way it is right now you've forgotten the role you do it very late it's a hard zero that figure's now gone now you've got an extra half roll so it it solves that problem as well what what nick has suggested that it now becomes a, a major downgrade, but not a hard zero and insertion. Right, so uh, we have Manfred again <coughs> for one last attempt. What do you mean, Lord? <laughs> I, I simply cannot see how we have to create a special rule for this category or for this kind of figures, a rule which prohibits judges to give a hard zero. Any other comment, question? Elena.
I think um, it actually there, there were lots of discussion about this length of the line, so I agree with this uh, solution to make it up to four. It's kind of uh, uh, the same as uh, with um, um, difference of lines before and after the roll kind of corresponds the uh, penalty for that. Um, if and again, it's not limit. It doesn't limit uh, the judge to give the hard zero if it's clear the case as you as you said when it's clearly two different figures. That's a hard zero and insertion. Manfred, and ag again, we are we are going we are going to discuss the length of the line. There is no such a thing as no line when the airplane is flying. You always will have a line, whatever it is. So, uh, I, I actually wanted to refer to the different um, uh, part of this proposal, which was added, and it, this is the change of the loading. This is going to start another discussion, whether the line was established or not, and whether the load or, uh, really changed. Uh, I would like to remind that HZ is the uh, matter of fact um, penalty. And this, is, this can be viewed by video. Are you going to decide on video whether the load changed or not? How are you going to do it? And again, I think we are, again, coming to the same. It, whether the judge can clearly say that the load on the wind was changed or not. I think in this case, probably better use the PZ because it's a matter of uh, perception, not a matter of fact, which can be viewed by video. I would agree with what Elena has just said um, with regards to the flick of the uh, line. May I, Matthew? Just. Uh. Okay, I have just a little technical question, which is actually not related exactly to what is written here. But uh, uh, from what I know, GASC refused to adopt this. If this will be adopted here, then we will have quite different rules for judging power and glider on those figures and so on. That's question for discussion. Yeah, okay. Okay, we will join a few hundred others with this one, right? Which means that there will be co finally real difference between glider and, and power judges as Elena want. No? Um, I'm, well, I'm just thinking about the philosophical thing here. If we, if we, and obviously it looks for me, this is clearly the point, we're changing a rule, as Manfred stated, I have to agree on this one, we're changing a rule not to discriminate the judges who gave a heart hero for something, clearly. Nick arguments that says that we should do something like this because the spread is too big otherwise. We got scores. I, I was one of your lines when we had five against five on this one. Um, we create a spread between the judges. But don't we create spread in judges as well with normal scores? One maybe gives a two and another one maybe gives an eight and that's a fact. So for me, the reason to change this rule because we want to do a favor to the judges is not valid. We need to think of the pilots. This is what I say. It is a pilot thing, it is not a judge, it's not a judge. But an effect of the lack of rule we have now is that there is a judge problem as well, and this resolves both. Okay, can I come back to what I said before? What's the difference between giving a 2.0 and an 8.0 and giving a score and a hard zero for the pilot? What's the difference? He gets the score that the judge has seen. 
There is a big difference, I agree, but what's the difference at the end of the day? If the majority thinks, yes, it is a hard zero, it is a hard zero. If the majority thinks we give an eight and only one gives a two, he, gives a, he, get, he gets a good score. Okay. You understand what it's philosophically, it's not technically. I understand your philosophic question. Um, I looked very carefully through section six because I believed there was somewhere in section six that described when judges should change from giving a downgrade to a hard zero. And I can find no reference to that. Mm -hmm. So I believe this is missing. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to slightly change rule. All the rule says at the moment is minimum two, and it gives no further advice. I'm changed, I would like to change this to minimum one and maximum four, and, and uh, simply avoid the, the unanswerable question as to when the figure changes to a hard zero, because there is no advice in the book that tells you when to do that. I'm, I'm not trying to change the world, I'm simply trying to to put a, a little simple reasoning behind what a judge should do, because it isn't there. I, I don't think it's in, in part two. It certainly is not in part one. There is no advice. So we have Pavel first after Manfred, and I think we will. All right. No, no, that's. <laughs> okay. So then you have the. We cannot. We have no point where figure is zero. So we have to have at first some submission or suggestion where to start with zero. Definitely. Not by time, not by length of line, not by the length of fuselage, and so on. So we have to have some suggestion for that. My suggestion is we are able, like judges, or judges are able, to assume length of line, diameter of the loop. Let's say, for example, that if the line is longer than diameter of the loop, figure is zero. And you can see clearly the loop is diameter, and after that, you will apply that length, the figure is definitely zero. Because we have no finish for marking, marking, scoring, scoring, and that very hard zero. So we have to start with some point, and we can assume uh, diameter of loop, we can assume length of uh, quarter, loop, uh, lines, so we, we can do it. So we have its, its suggestion, we have to start somewhere with R0. As the one person said, not to wait until the end of the course. Uh, I, I agree completely <laughs> with what Pavel said. Uh, I always thought judges are there to judge and if the judge in his judgment sees two different figures two separate figures he should give a hard zero it's a matter of judgment we cannot always tell judges you have to look at the line which is x meters long or on a tail slide, uh, a half fuselage length backwards with the pits flying at uh, 1,000 meters above ground and one kilometer away from the judge. How do you judge half a fuselage length? That is just as ridiculous. Uh, for my opinion, we must not ask or we must not answer the question when turns this figure from a scored figure to a hard zero. If we take the example of the half loop and one and a half roll at the end of the loop, and the pilot is showing a line, then it's up to the judge to downgrade this figure. The longer the line is, the more he downgrades until he reaches 0.0. .0. Because it is a loop, and somewhere, sometimes later, we have one and a half roll. We come to a 0.0, .0 not to a perception zero, because the judge made perception uh, that the pilot has forgotten something, and we do not come to a hard zero, because sometimes there is the one and a half roll. If in fact, if in fact the pilot has forgotten the one and a half roll, and he remembers and then shows only a half roll to be in the correct position for the next figure, then of course it is a hard zero. 
but only then. Before, if he shows the correct maneuver, it is a 0.0. .0. If the line is too long for the judge, it is like in the rolling circles. If the rolling circle is too poor, then the judge counts down to 0.0. .0. It's up to the judge, that's my opinion. So we have now... Elena? Well, so maybe we just don't put the limit to, uh, to the points and leave it to the for the judges to mark it from the 10 to up to 0, 0. But, uh, I, well, Paul, nice try, but I would not agree with that because, let's say, if you make a very big loop and then you, need, you, you end up on the top of this uh, oh, half loop uh, without any speed and then you, a pilot takes some time to gain the speed and only after that makes a roll, you would clearly see the line, you would clearly see that it's kind of a separate figure, but you won't compare it with the, with the diameter of the loop. With a smaller diameter of the loop, at high speed you will see a longer line and downgrade the pilot easier for, no, well, for less uh, mistake, I say. Elena, I have a question. Last, last, uh, last, last question. Uh, I just want to ask if you just didn't contradict yourself what? with saying that uh, if the pilot will come up to the up to the half loop, uh, wait a few seconds, uh, made a link, uh, 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 made a line to to get the speed, and then do the roll, he will just have a deduction of four points and not hard zero because he did the maneuver wrong, without speed and so on. Yeah, but what you said to me was contradiction to what you were opposing before. Okay, uh, wait a minute. We, we need to uh, come to an end to that. I, I give the mic to John one last time. After that, I summarize what's going on and we vote. This proposal came after two occasions in the championship in Poland where exactly this type of occurrence happened and there was a major split i wasn't chief judge by the way and that's got nothing to do with it but there was a major difference of opinion so half the judges gave hz other others gave a, a downgrade and there's nothing in the regulations to sort it out either way and the proposal that's come is just coming to try and prevent similar situations happening in the future. It's at least a step in the right direction to make the chief judge's job easier. If it's not written in the regulations, how do you decide what to do? Right, so everybody had the opportunity to make uh, very valid comments. Let me try to summarize and, and see what we can do from this point. First of all, I think there was kind of a consensus to say that on this second bullet point it would be a PZ and not an HZ. That, if we agree with that, this needs to be in the regulations because today there is nothing that says in the regulation that this would be awarded a PZ. Uh, and on the first bullet point, I, I heard some uh, some proposal. I don't know whether the JSC would agree, but I, I submit now if you would agree to say that the downgrade would be uh, uh, up to 0, 0.0 score, which means that this the situation can lead to a zero in, in the end, to, but to a 0, 0.0. So then no line. Uh, if you get the perfect figure, you get a 10 line, depending on the judge perception, you downgrade until, until you reach a 0.0. .0. Would that be a, a kind of a synthesis of what all the points made would do? Or, 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 do you, or, or does it not reflect what could be the consensus? And in that case, we would vote. Sorry, to come to a 0, zero it you're deducting points from a figure where you see errors. 
And the problem with coming to zero, zero here is we have nothing written as to how you would arrive at the zero, zero. How many points do you deduct? Is it on length of line? There's nothing in the regulation. And this is the whole problem which is Nick is trying to solve. Yes, but you will observe that uh, you don't have any other guidance on whether you would downgrade by uh, two, three, or four. So it's a, it's a yeah. So okay. So same. So anyway, uh, I get I, I I take from that that we need to to Pavel. Do you have an important contribution now? Elena? Can we add to this that if judge clearly sees two figures, it's a hard zero and insertion? Hard zero, not P zero, HZ. Okay. The judge clearly sees yes. two different figures. As, as you said before, you will not check that on the video. But well, you, you can, well, you, you can see the line. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so we, we have an issue that we, uh, okay, we can spend the day, the tomorrow and uh, next week on that apparently. Uh, so what's the procedure here? It means that we have to vote simply. So wait a minute, we, we, we vote for this except PZ in, instead of HZ here because I think there was a consensus on this one on the loading. Um, PZ instead of HZ on this second bullet point. Who is in favor of this proposal? Which one? <laughs> okay. I say again, Elena, maybe you were you were talking. Maybe maybe you were talking. Okay. We we are voting for NP number 16 as a whole. Yes, because we have no choice. We vote for the proposal, and this HZ is replaced by a PZ. Is this appropriate to vote? Is, would this be inappropriate to vote for the whole? So we vote for the whole. And who is in favor of this proposal? Eight. Who is against this proposal? Yes. Against? High? Fourteen. Fourteen. I abstain. France abstains. Proposal is rejected. This one will catch up a little bit on time. We agreed before that this would be something for the new known analysis working group to deal with. So we can go to number 18. So. Now we have number 18, this should be an easy one as well. 
it was it is mentioned today in the rules that sorry no it is mentioned today in the rules that you're not allowed to have a 2.2 .2, uh, sorry a, a 2 of 2 on the 40 degree line in advanced here okay but it said nothing about this one which is if you look carefully the same as far as the uh, 45 down is concerned so it's about this proposal is about fixing this uh, inconsistency simply and to make sure that this applies also there any objection right adopted And we move to the next one. Sorry, I missed that, Mike. Uh, you, uh, you skipped, uh, when you skipped over uh, in 2014-17, uh, you said something about working groups uh, dealing with that, and I, I don't agree with that. Uh, what the UK and the US proposal both uh, proposed uh, in different ways was for SEBA to establish some policy on how the known sequences were to be uh, analyzed and then selected. For example, the United States proposal uh, requested a series of deadlines uh, by which known proposals would be submitted and deadline for working group analysis and then deadline for posting the agenda document with the working group analysis on the website. I don't think that's the job of the known analysis working group, but rather uh, policy that should be established by plenary. So I think this proposal deserves the attention of plenary right now. Right, so let's come back to this one. Um, it could have been, it could have been a, a, a duty or a task for the working group to propose something, but I, I, I take your point. Let's discuss that. We have, as you've seen in the document, two different uh, uh, proposals here. The first one on the left is the uh, UK one, and the uh, right, on the right-hand side, you have a summary of the USA one. They are different. You see that the UK one uh, is much more demanding in terms of uh, what to do, especially on flying. Uh, uh, any comment, discussion on what to do in the future on that? It's UK number three, not one. Uh, it's USA number one. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11, sorry. It's USA 11 and UK number three. It's as written here. There is no discussion, but we have to solve something because we have two different solutions which... Right correct. Manfred? On behalf of the Glider Subcommittee, the Glider Subcommittee unanimously opposes that glider known sequences should be selected or judged or, uh, uh, or recommended by the known analysis working group. First, for the time being, there is no glider experience included in this working group. And second, if you want to have all the glider expertise in one place, then go to the glider subcommittee. Thank you, Manfred. So I think I, I should clarify here that what, what we're discussing in the, is the power procedure due to some observed shortcomings or drawbacks of the current procedure that you don't have in the glider today because all that is selected within the glider subcommittee. So they, those proposals, I think I, I speak on behalf of the RSC, are about dealing with a power known selection. Correct, Mike? Ah, all right. I, I missed that one. Uh, is UK prepared to say that this is for power only? Absolutely. 
Don and Elena now. Well, I think uh, we already uh, make one proposal for uh, the subcommittee, uh, for, for the working groups to decide how to rank the uh, sequences. I would think we need to um, accept the U.S. proposal, uh, including what the working group will, would make this um, um, criteria for ranking the, uh, uh, the sequences. And from the U.K. proposal, uh, take this um, uh, flying the sequences by recognized pilot and say that this input is um, invited by the working group. And so if recognized pilots fly these sequences and give their report to, this, uh, to the working group by certain time limit, it, they would regard this input and uh, um, kind of add it to, to their evaluation. Clear, Clear. Nick? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I would like to be a little flexible on this. Uh, the intention is simply to uh, put some formality into a process which has been conducted uh, quite well in the past, but without any guidelines. Um, we have in the past uh, had sequences presented and voted at SIVA, many of which have never been flown. And I, I personally, I think that's unacceptable. They should be flown. It's... Uh, we have some good experts who look at sequences, uh, but really to, to uh, produce a comment on a sequence without it being flown or without listening to the advice of somebody who has flown it is, uh, I, I think, not acceptable. And uh, the other thing that I, I would like to see is uh, in the past we have had some sequences that I think the, the whole group, the, the known analysis working group, would consider unsuitable and I think this should not come before SIVA in the end for voting. I think the known analysis working group should be allowed to discard sequences that are not acceptable and shouldn't be voted upon um, and, and in that way act as a, an expert advice group and bring sequences for voting to SIVA that are, are only acceptable to fly. Right, so, uh, it, it, does everyone understand it right that there is a kind of uh, a change here that, first of all, if we take the basis of the U.S. proposal with all the details in the, in the document, we ask the working group to come up with a conclusion in terms of criteria how to merge those ideas here with the ideas of the spreadsheet from the previous uh, Russian proposal you remember. First point. Second point, we could say that the working group invites inputs from any pilot who has had the opportunity to fly uh, the sequence. Third point, that we give to the working group in the operational part of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the selection process, we give to the working group the authority to discard some sequences. And I think that's it. Apart from that, this means that we can merge the two. What we have not discussed is this one, acceptable formats. I think uh, that's going a bit too far. We need to maybe to be a bit flexible on that as well. At least that's my personal opinion. Uh, do we? Do you see a chance that we can merge those two into one and vote on one, or do you want to vote separately? Yeah. Nick, no, are you are you okay with what I said? I'm happy to be very flexible. I simply want to apply some formalities to right. what is done. Right. So based on what I summarize now, and assuming we also remove the the format thing that I, I've, I've observed in the past and, and France has done that as well, that we've submitted sequences in PDF or even sometimes in handwriting 
and it, 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 it worked okay, thanks in particular to Brian Howard who redrew, uh, uh, redrew all the sequences, but if this is okay, can we then conclude the day with that and say, is there any objection to this, to what I said? Or you completely misunderstood or what? No, that's okay? So, we adopt this uh, with the amendments uh, and we took note of that. And I think it's time now, Angie. Time out.